I've been a master tailor for 60 years. I think young. I don't feel old. The way I got into tailoring is in the old days in Italy, there was only grade five elementary education. That's all there was. Either we go to work to the farm with your mom and dad, or they will send you to an apprentice. And the other choice is you could go to the monastery and become a priest. <laughs> I didn't like that idea, so <laughs> yeah. I chose tailor shop. <laughs> but you don't interrupt my conversation. Figaro, Figaro. I am 27 years old. I am an apprentice tailor to my father. I have been working for my dad for about three years now. And in 10 years, I see myself running the shop. <laughs> Hopefully. You'll wait. <laughs> Successful. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's a serious True. business. What did I expect to do with my life? No, there's no, no. What is your weight? <sighs> Two... Sixty? Two sixty-five? I'm a big guy. When I put on a suit from off the rack, it feels like a potato sack. Putting on a custom suit just makes you feel better about yourself. Fifty-seven inches. I like to be able to make a suit from, like, start to finish. And like, oh, I need this done. And like, boom, I will know right away. Right now, I... I mm. <laughs> Not so much. And working with my dad, it takes a lot of patience. Now you can measure me. Oh, no. Put it here. Look, look in here. Put that there, and you put your paws like that. You hold it. My dad, I don't know, he's a different kind of breed. I want to soak up as much knowledge as I can now, and he's 70. You know, he's not getting any younger. This is what we call a fitter. <laughs> One of the other reasons that I've been working with him is because he needs the help. He has arthritis everywhere. He probably doesn't tell I have a lot of people, but I clip his toenails, I put his socks on sometimes, you know, I just like, I help him out when he needs it. Back to work. Coffee break is over. <laughs> come on, come on. Relax. Oh, yeah, relax. relax. It's not ready to make a jacket yet. <laughs> you can do parts of it. For now, we can mark it. Okay. You hold it, you hold it, you see it? Mm -hmm. Everyone is different in some way or the other. Mostly we get the difficult ones. The ones that are either hunchbacked or very erect or very big chest, small waist. These are people that cannot go to the store. This is a no good, very sloppy marking. So many lines you don't know where to cut. There's no room for screw ups. There's no, well, I. Okay. Yeah. I'm probably the last of the Mohegans that can still do that kind of work. Five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. Cut it. Come over here. We put these pieces here. Mm -hmm. Anywhere there's a crease, see? It goes through the oven. So it cooks everything. Yeah. It's a spicy meatball. Hey. If I can thread the needle here, I will be surprised. When you have Senor Coco hovering around you, like the amount of anxiety that he gives you when he's just right there, oh. This way, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. But why do it that way? Because I said so. <laughs> he expects you to know exactly what he's talking about. And that's the thing that's hard because he forgets that. I don't know what you're talking about. How wide is this supposed to be? Quarter of an inch. And how much is this? I don't know. It's bigger than this one. OK. 
Take this out, the shoulder pads. I'm gonna give you this much more room, both on each side. That's gonna give you an inch and a half altogether. <laughs> Excellent. Raphael has some very special talent. He's very creative. But when there was an elementary school, eh, um, he was considered a bully. Uh, he was in grade four and having difficulty uh, reading. He preferred to be punished, not to do homework, because he, he couldn't handle the, the frustration of it, or even express himself, you know? So I seek some advice, and this is what the doctor says. You have a brilliant son, but he's got dyslexia in the language part. Then after six months of special school, I started to see changes. Are you having trouble? You want the old man to do it for you? No. Because I got it. Okay. You're not doing too bad. Now you see, he did so well that he, he doesn't stop talking now. That's it. Stop, stop, cut. All righty. Vacuum. Yep. This is release and this is close, see? Mm hmm Yeah. Now, what's important, your hands and your fingers out of there before you close the press. All right. He's showing me so much. Try and take it all in. Sometimes it's just it's a little much, but I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Get your paws out of the way. What? Your paws. Yeah, well, they are over here. Get your Don't do away. that. And then dealing with him, that's the biggest part. <laughs> is that good? Yeah. I don't want to be angry with him. There isn't a mean bone in his body. His only problem is his heart is bigger than his head. Yeah, you see how good that is? How smooth? Mm -hmm. See it? That's good. That's what you sound when you get mad. That's you. I have to let the steam out to protect my inside. I have to release <laughs> the pressure. That's a lot of steam. <laughs> this is the final step. That's it? Now cut it. No, you don't cut the button. <laughs> there you go. Following my father's footsteps, there's not a lot of people that would do that. I enjoy teaching my son, and when I got through him, you know, what I wanted him to learn, and I see that he done, then, then I feel good about that. I'm gonna try and take over the family business. That's the idea, at least, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work towards it, you know. I think I could pull it off. It would be the most important thing for me if I knew that he likes it and he wants to take it over with his heart and soul. Not half and half, it doesn't work. Making a suit, it's fun, it's cool. I'm getting the hang of it. And from when I started to now, I, I know a few more things. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. It was beautiful, really. Just, it was... Well, do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Come back next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>